women agree to skip foreplay because they don't think they deserve to be treated better. <laughs> last time I saw you was on the shoot where we were extras together. Oh yes, yeah, a beautiful, long day. The most day. exclusive sex party <laughs> in the world. I especially enjoyed the clapping part and the, uh, yeah. the, the whistling and everything. It was so beautiful. You liked that though, for real? Yeah, for real, I liked that. I, I really, I'm looking forward to having this kind of scene, but you know, with myself as the... the mm the main <laughs> actress there and for people to cheer me like that you know to to give me an applaud and everything yeah yeah like i've i haven't seen many scenes like that before i've seen them more on like humiliation sites yeah where like the you know the public humiliation ones where Not the really. girls kind of yeah everything's happening to her. <laughs> okay. and there's like a big crowd like whooping <laughs> with like all guys um yeah. but yeah i don't think and I think there used to be an American company that mm. used to go to college frat houses in America and take okay. some porn stars and like get all the college guys drunk for free while they filmed some porn in the middle of them. Wow. And, um, <laughs> I think they had to stop it because it was getting like a bit mm. out of hand or like it didn't quite fit with like the Me Too kind of era. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I can't <laughs> imagine. What is it you like about it? I, I don't uh, I have, it's just so cool. I'm well, I've never uh, seen a scene like that. Like mm -hmm. I've never watched porn where people actually do that. And I've never done it myself. So it was like a super new experience to me and it's something different, you know? Yeah. It's not something that you expect to see in porn. People, uh, you know, clapping the, and yeah. I wasn't sure if like the clapping was like sarcastic <laughs> or real, you know, like, oh, thank God we're done. <laughs> No, I don't know. I really love it. I really want it for myself too. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to try and make it happen. It's like and come on and yes and yes and and joy go. <laughs> you know. But they were cheering for the guy. Yeah, I know, but I want that for me. Yes, too. it's different. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so welcome to Lustcast. <laughs> Today I'm Thank with you. a fairly new porn star from yeah. Finland called Anjoy. Yeah. And. We're going to be talking about kind of how to please a woman, um, like mm -hmm. the female orgasm and things like that. It's quite mysterious for a lot of guys <laughs> and as well as being a porn star <laughs> and is also like an intimacy coach. Yeah. Is that the best way? Sex coach. Sex coach. Yeah. 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 <laughs> See, that's why I want this, all the clapping and cheering because I'm a coach. Exactly. Right? <laughs> I, I really do just think, when I think like sex coach, yeah. I really imagine a whistle. <laughs> Like there's got to be a whistle. <laughs> yeah, that's why I enjoyed that uh, that scene so much. That could it's... be like your porn thing, is yeah. that you could always have a whistle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, this is a good gimmick. Yeah, I like the idea. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. If you're not subscribed already, please press subscribe, please follow, follow on social media, like everything. Um, it just encourages us to keep making more episodes. And so back to the sex party mm -hmm. porn video with it. Right? <laughs> so I think that's just a great way in. Yeah. Um, we said that, so they were cheering for the guy, mm. but I think we couldn't cheer for the girl because like, we don't really, uh, I don't know when she comes. It's like, I, sometimes mm. I think I can tell, Yeah. but so often <laughs> girls fake it yeah <laughs> unfortunately but i have to say that in this scene uh it was kind of easy to tell when she had her orgasm because oh do you think she did um well she squirted she squirted oh, oh cherry did yeah yeah yeah, yeah, cherry yeah. Did. the other girl um, i thought no I didn't see at least, but Sherry did, and Sherry you can did, yeah. clearly see when that happened because it was basically like uh, everywhere an explosion. Mm. Yeah, but so we could, you know, we could uh, up, um, clap for her and we could but cheer that, her too. That brings out a whole other conversation about do you <laughs> think squirting's real? Because in yeah. porn, normally it's not. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't want to say. I don't know. Girls can fake anything. Mm, I don't know how to fake squirt yet. I'm about to learn. I'm very new, as um, you said. So. Basically, you drink lots of water. Yeah, and then and you push it, and then yeah. But yeah. I cannot do that. It's it's. I guess it's mostly still psychological, like block. But I'm I'm about to learn. Yeah. Yeah, I don't to like learn. to pee not <laughs> in a place for peeing. <laughs> <laughs> but it should be fun. It can be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've Just never had a problem squirting, <laughs> you know, like that. Yeah. <laughs> the male mm. ejaculation, it's quite easy, I think. Yeah. And that's like one of the things you said that you're quite passionate about is like this mismatch between, Yeah. Uh, you call it like, what is it, orgasm equality or something? Orgasm equality sounds really good. I like to call it like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And well, there is a lot to say and a lot to probably argue about too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to fight. Uh, no, I think we were allowed to disagree on some things. <laughs> yeah, but like for example, in this scene, I would really love to uh, give some appreciation for Cherry or for mm -hmm. the for the other girl too, because yes, we supported the guy, you know, and we were really really excited to see him coming. But what about the girl? <laughs> I mean, I was also really excited to finally see her orgasm. You know, why couldn't I? give uh, a round of applause for her i think we did for the squirting yeah yeah i think that's when the cheering started okay but it was smaller then yeah i think yeah that the first cheering for the squirt yeah um everyone was like huh <laughs> why are we cheering <laughs> yeah that's why i don't even remember that because it was just like i feel i will class. never forget that day to be honest with <laughs> you <laughs> I don't go to a lot of um, like porn shoots for other companies, mm. so I don't really know what it's like. And that one was yeah. a bit of a shocker for me. Yeah, I'm wondering if they are all <laughs> like that. Like. So was I. I was thinking like, because um, yeah, it's so mm. different how I work. Yeah. Um, and like from the things I was looking at, with like for the guy, mm. I felt. There was nothing that day that would turn me on. It was mm. just like, like the location was dirty. Yeah. Like, so immediately I'd be like, how do you, <laughs> how do you get turned on in a dirty place? But know? there was a certain vibe. It was like a dark, dirty, techno place, yeah. you know? That's just not me that anymore. That's me on. <laughs> 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 That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so much I, I feel i'm like maybe i'm just harder to please <laughs> <laughs> you're just too picky yeah but everything about that place was really <laughs> like, really turned out for me yeah i thought the bar was cool like i'd go there with friends mm -hmm. but maybe they could clean it <laughs> <laughs> someone was drinking tequila there and um yeah. there were bugs in the tequila Oh, yeah. And they were still drinking the tequila. Yeah, I was drinking there. I was drinking my coffee with some ants in it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like... Well, it's either that or no coffee, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's a really good thing for me to say. <laughs> and know, it's so, so funny because we were laughing with some friends about how much porn has changed in mm -hmm. Budapest in the mm -hmm. last 20 years. So 20 years ago, mm -hmm. the productions were so wealthy, they could afford any location. Mm. They were filming in like historic venues. Wow. They were like filming an orgy in like one of the Ottoman spas that's mm. like a thousand years old. And wow. you could not yeah. do that now. Like one, yeah. they wouldn't let us. <laughs> and two, they couldn't yeah. afford it. Yeah. So like something's happened. So now we have to go to a dirty abandoned yeah. nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even in the center. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. But yeah, so... I think we can agree. I think it's fair to say that it's more difficult for mm -hmm. a girl to have an orgasm. Yeah, definitely, yes. And yeah. I think an another thing is that most men want their partner to have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. Maybe not for the right reasons. 
Like, I think there is like a sense of achievement because it's so hard for girls to have yeah. orgasms. There's like a sense of achievement when we yeah. do it. So it's like yeah, for is. us, I think it's like playing a video game, and it's like yeah. if we just get the right mechanical yeah. process, like yeah. the right steps, then it will happen. Yeah. And then there can be frustration if it doesn't, I guess. Yeah, there is a lot of frustration. Uh, yeah, because um, orgasm, especially for women, often uh, considered as a, the main goal, you know, mm -hmm. or something. If it doesn't happen, then yes, the the girl is um, broken and the guy is a, is a loser because, you know, oh. one cannot uh, achieve orgasm, mm -hmm. you know, physically and something is wrong with her. And then another one is a loser because he couldn't, um, you know, make that happen. Mm -hmm. So, and everybody is upset. But still, it's, uh, in my opinion, it's a better scenario than when a guy doesn't try at all. So, yeah. when he is just like, okay, I came and this is over. Is that common? I would say this scenario is quite common. At least it happened to me, unfortunately, <laughs> many times. Oh. It's really sad. And it's definitely a red flag for the next, uh, there is no next date, simply after that. No, if someone's you know? selfish, then. Yeah. There's a lot of selfish girls as well that just lie there and don't get involved. Mm, yeah, Dead probably. Fish. See, I cannot say that. I haven't had much girls. Mm -hmm. that girls in my bed but yeah i can believe it mm. yeah i feel like when we talk about the female orgasm there is this expectation that obviously the guy has to do it usually mm. but also like the girl could just jump on there sort herself out like yeah. ride the guy yeah, and I'm so it's really not all on us, you know. I know, I know what you mean. I'm really looking forward to the times when girls feel comfortable and feel free to, um, I don't know, to just uh, masturbate in front of the guy, you know, and have mm. an orgasm. It doesn't matter if the guy wants uh, to help or to participate or not, and so it's not all the the man's job, you know. But for now, I feel like women simply don't feel that comfortable with their sexuality and their sexual desires yet. For some women, it's difficult to even admit that they want pleasure, you know, mm -hmm. and especially if it's difficult to want to say that I want an orgasm, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, I've definitely seen that. Like, um, when I'm dating someone new, um, I try to get them to just be open and tell mm -hmm. me what they like, but yeah. normally they won't because they're like shy. They'll just go, oh, yeah. I like everything. Yeah. So I, I <laughs> immediately say do. like, okay, will you lick my ass? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then it's like horror. <laughs> it's like, so and she's like, maybe tell yes. me what you like. <laughs> <laughs> but did they say yes uh, just because they uh... no 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 they, they they look at me in horror <laughs> and they're like oh my god no no i don't like everything okay um yeah. some say yes but <laughs> it's not so common <laughs> i'm really happy for you no. not so common yeah <clears throat> no so how can a guy get a girl to open up more it's very, I want to say it's very easy to to try at least uh, with communication. As you say, just ask questions. And the first thing you say is that I am, you know, I'm here for you. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can, I want you to have, I want to, to enjoy. I want you to have a good time with me. And it's important for me to know that you feel good. It's important for me to know what you like, what you want. You know, because I've read sometimes that like that can put pressure on the girl, though. Like if it's like you know, it's important for me to. Okay, it's not so important. Not so <laughs> medium important for medium me. Medium important. <laughs> yeah. mm, what kind of pressure? What do you mean? Um, like you know when um when the guy really wants the girl to come. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean that. I don't yeah. mean to be this. Yeah, it's like, oh, I really want you to come. It's very important to me. No, but mm. it's Im important for me that you like, you know, being here with me. That's all. Mm. I don't feel much pressure in it. Yeah. 
And also good to mention that if you want to have an orgasm, I'm happy to help. You know, I'm happy to learn how you like to, yeah. to achieve it. If you don't want, it's fine with me. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, when I was younger, I used to, I guess, just do my routine. Mm -hmm. And then that was it. Yeah. And then I kind of found that it was better <laughs> if I tried to give them an orgasm yeah. before we had sex. Oh, yes. So like that was yeah. what I aimed for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But one of the things I've noticed, I don't know if it's recently, but maybe I'm just more observant now, mm -hmm. um, is I noticed a lot of girls will stop me before they come. Mm -hmm. Like when they're getting really close, they'll stop me. Almost like they don't want it to happen. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> but I don't know, is that a thing that's just happening with me or is this a thing? You mean before sex? No. So like, let's or say I'm general. going down on a girl yeah, and like, obviously things are building up mm -hmm. and I can feel that she's about to come. Yeah. Yeah. She'll stop me and say like, oh no, it's too sensitive. And it's like, I know she hasn't come yet, mm -hmm. but. You know, so maybe that's like a problem. I don't know. Like maybe you should ask them. <laughs> they don't know? say anything. They just go, "Oh, it's no? too sensitive. It's too much." And and they they cannot have an orgasm. They don't orgasm, or I, I would they? say they don't. Maybe they do. They. I, I feel like they're close. They're about to. Yeah. But they don't. But you've never asked if they if she has. I have, but I haven't got a good answer. <laughs> I don't know. It's for, it's a, it's a mystery for me too. You know, even though I'm a I'm a woman myself and I mm -hmm. have a vagina and vulva and all these things, it still doesn't answer all the <laughs> question. It's too questions hard. Related Girls are to, so complicated. Oh, oh please. <laughs> um, human being is complicated. Mm -hmm. If you don't communicate well. <laughs> yeah. we cannot read each other's mind so yeah i cannot tell for me sometimes i find it very tricky to tell if the guy is actually enjoying for example a blow job right or a hand job mm, i cannot always tell if the guy likes it or not mm -hmm. and sometimes i feel like when i ask do you like this do you like that because i really like asking questions mm -hmm. you know mm, to make sure that everything is okay and I have a feeling sometimes that I, I don't receive an honest answer or guys feel they don't expect me to ask them questions and to, to have interest in their, you know, pleasure. Mm -hmm. And and so sometimes I feel like they don't really enjoy that much maybe or they wish me to do something differently, but they don't want to say. So they're also complicated yeah, well, I, I, I agree with that completely because, um, like, every girl I meet mm -hmm. thinks she does amazing blowjobs. And I'm like, well, a guy is not going to say anything different <laughs> because yeah. I just think it's not in our nature. Yeah. Um, but I, I find usually I'm having to, like, like, I just say what I want. I'm like, look, mm -hmm. can you squeeze harder and maybe yeah. wetter? Mm -hmm. And that's really and, good. Um, yeah. And yeah. Like, and they're like, oh, you don't like what I'm doing? So <gasps> I do, but this is a little bit better. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. like, everyone's different. It's the same for us, definitely. Yes. Yeah. And so the same way you cannot answer all my questions about guys, right? Because everybody mm -hmm. is different. And it's really good to remember that. And in my ideal world, um, before having... Okay, when you meet someone new, you would have like a session together, you know, an session. intimate oh, session yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of, yeah. you know, so you, you go to the hotel or to one's place and you you spend 30 minutes, an hour just exploring each other's bodies and it's not sex. So mm -hmm. we are going home not to have sex, but to to learn about each other. And things like that, you know, just asking questions. What do you like? Um, where do you like me to touch? Mm -hmm. um, after that, yes, you can do more regular sex when you know more about each other. Yeah, so are you saying like even skip sex completely on the first, like actual sex? and just Or maybe do... continue yeah. with actual sex. 
but yeah 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 i think more foreplay is always good advice for guys mm -hmm. it's really easy to skip ahead <laughs> yeah and um yeah foreplay with communication with communication yeah because foreplay doesn't necessarily give this idea of talking mm -hmm. foreplay means different things for everybody again for someone foreplay is just to touch his penis you know and then yeah a quick blowjob <laughs> and, and i must admit like the stereotype is that like men don't like foreplay and they just go straight to the sex mm -hmm. But I'd say most women do too. Like, um, yes. Mm. I think it's like one of those things that's unfairly thrown at men. But I, I have think an it's opinion just on that. <laughs> most people just go straight to the dick, and uh, because that's that's uh, that is what expected from us. And again, here comes the psychological trick because. Um, why women agree to skip the foreplay because they don't think they deserve in a way to be treated better you know mm -hmm. and it's it's just a scenario a very common uh, scenario that is deeply you know rooted in our in our minds and yeah that's just something uh, familiar to us mm -hmm. And it takes courage and, you know, confidence to say that, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> I want this and this. I want more. Why do you think girls are not confident to say those things? <laughs> History. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, years mean, like, and years of shame. But you're, you live in like a Scandinavian country, like one of the most equal places yes. in the world like, one I mean, of the most equal but like comparing. Finnish guys are so passive they like the girls tend to ask the guy out there is my understanding mm, depends depends yeah but, depends so like yes it is most equal but again relatively equal because you know we compare we compare to what if we compare to russia uh yes finland is much more equal mm -hmm. and much more fair but still it doesn't mean that we have you know we are so confident to to openly talk about all these things so it's how do we the, get the girl comfortable to talk <clears throat> as i said previously yeah you just uh show show to the girl that you're not an asshole from the very first minutes so hard. you're an asshole <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, okay I, I think i get it mm -hmm. what are the most common reasons why a girl can't have an orgasm so there are <laughs> there are a few reasons uh the one is um physiological i would say right or anatomical even it depends how the uh, you know how everything is located because Every orgasm is a um, clitoral orgasm, mm -hmm. right? And if we're talking about uh, normal vaginal penetrative sex, mm -hmm. um, for some women, it's more difficult to achieve orgasm with this way because the, the, the walls of vaginal walls are more thick mm -hmm. and the, the penis doesn't, touch so much the clitoris okay. because the clitoris it's not the it's not just this uh, being outside that you can see but it's also the whole organ inside mm -hmm. uh, or it can be the legs of the clitoris can be located more far from the vaginal walls which again doesn't help um, yeah you know things like that and then also uh, psychological reasons like mm -hmm. Oh, how my body looks, you know, am I, am I beautiful enough? Am I fit enough? Am I, does this taking, is this taking too long? <laughs> am I supposed to have my orgasm now? I've heard that men yeah. can have orgasm in just one minute. And for me, it's already taken three minutes. Damn, he's probably tired. And, you know, it's just, it's like a snowball. Yeah. The one that stands out for me is the, um, attractiveness one mm -hmm. that's the one i encounter most of all i think i think it's because of my job because mm. yeah. they think like well you're hanging out with these like beautiful uh, yes. women so why do you like me <laughs> yeah. yeah and um 
yeah, even if they're like just very beautiful people, they don't mm-hmm. quite believe it. Yeah. So they'll often like close their eyes or like hide their head under a pillow and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, it's just so sad. I cannot, you know. <laughs> but can you get, can you get like help a girl with that if you're a guy or? Mm, probably by, uh, yeah, communication. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Here I go again, <laughs> me and communication. No, just saying. I, it doesn't mean that the girl will believe immediately. But yeah, you know, that's little the thing. by little. Yeah. And also maybe recommend a good psychologist or sexologist. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine how long one of my relationships would last if I recommended a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> No, really. I'm well, I've wanted to recommend psychologists <clears throat> to quite a few of my exes. <laughs> so thank you for confirming <laughs> that I was right. Uh, no, I, I truly believe that we have to normalize uh, personal therapy, you know, for ourselves and also for our partners. Mm. <laughs> and oh. not, not being <laughs> mean about that, but just... Uh, and also, it's very important not to talk, uh, not to discuss these things during sex, you know, <laughs> it's like, or I can see that you're too shy. Maybe here is a psychologist I've been going to while you're still in her. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. But just like a separate discussion. Yeah. And also open up a bit about yourself, you know, show that you also have some insecurities. If you do, if you do not have, then... I, I think everybody does, but I think usually... They go with age, mm-hmm. but maybe not for everybody. Like I do find that if I'm having sex with an older girl, mm-hmm. she'll have an orgasm more easily. Like yeah. she'll know her body and her mind yeah. Yeah. more intimately. Yes. And she just won't care so much. As yes, well. for sure. Uh, it can go with age, but we can also uh, make it more, you know, make it improve it faster i don't know just by going to a sexologist or a psychologist you don't have to wait until you're 50 to finally feel feel uh, comfortable in your body but you can also just work with a professional and and do you think that's psychological or is it because i've heard i don't know how true it is i've heard that like, obviously women reach the sexual peak as they get mm-hmm. older so maybe part of it is just like an increased horniness like a change in their bodies uh, see, I'm not a doctor, so I cannot really tell much if biologically things change so much. But I can easily believe that psychological uh, aspect plays a huge role in it. Because as we grow up and as we become more and more adult, we become more comfortable with ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's why finally our sexuality can be colorful and, you know, strong at some point finally and that's that's i think the the biggest reason why and um, yeah okay another question um so <laughs> this will sound so bad <laughs> yeah like because you said that like, you should maybe go to psychologists <laughs> if you need help but <laughs> one thing that is i'm pretty sure every guy has noticed this mm-hmm. is crazy girls I usually like better at sex and okay. come more easily. Like the more <laughs> crazy they are, they're like, mm-hmm. like, you know, the more like, um, like even if they're like actually diagnosed as crazy, okay. they're usually way more sexual and okay. I shouldn't say diagnosed as crazy. So if they're diagnosed with some like mental health mm-hmm. disorders, um, like, borderline personality disorder mm-hmm. that seems to be one that i've noticed seems to lead to like a more hypersexual attitude and um mm-hmm. seems more orgasms as well for girls see for me uh personal therapy doesn't mean becoming normal but it just means um discovering your own craziness okay yeah and and feeling comfortable with it yeah yes it doesn't mean to become normal or boring. 
And I do agree that crazy girls are the more, <laughs> yes, are the best. But we can be crazy uh, thanks to the personal therapy. So we can finally accept that part and like, okay, yes, this is my craziness. And it's beautiful. I can mm -hmm. live with it. I'm happy with it. Okay. So that explains that. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy is good. <laughs> yes. For everybody? Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> as long as uh, the person is enjoying it. Yeah. So what kind of problems do girls come to you with? Um, the most common problem is that they don't feel attractive. They don't feel sexy, beautiful. And that leads to many other problems like no mm. orgasm or low libido mm, yeah some difficulties in sex life with their partners so and yeah when we start talking there is always this common thing that i don't feel beautiful and enough is that because they're not beautiful or because mm -hmm. i mean some people they they they're, they're <laughs> not right and, yeah and i always say like I think like anyone can be attractive. They mm -hmm. just have to like work at it. You know, like <laughs> go to the gym and learn makeup and mm -hmm. things like that. No, these girls are super attractive in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> I hope they're watching this. No, I think they're very beautiful and they're, you know, they're young, attractive, um, naturally attractive they don't have to work hard for it mm -hmm. and there are no there are no obvious <clears throat> reasons to feel bad about their bodies it's just something else yeah yeah and often it's like the more attractive girls that don't feel as attractive they're the more insecure ones i find quite often mm, it might be yeah can be so in my case that was <laughs> that was about me some few years back Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. As you can see, I'm very humble. So, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so I can perfectly understand this, these girls and it's, it feels really good to help them. And so you give them something that like their partner isn't or you help them? We just find the reason why they're feeling insecure. And um, I didn't want to... <laughs> I don't want to say it so much, but very often we come to a relationship with parents. You oh, know, really? Something that happened in the... Okay, not necessarily with parents. Sometimes parents, sometimes uh, just something that happened in the childhood. Like um, some boy in, in the class say that, oh, you're ugly, you're fat. Actually, that was the oh. case. Some guy told my, my uh, client that, you know, you're fat. And she was 10 years old or something. And since then, she started having, um, how do you call it? Mm, eating disorders? Yeah. Yes. And she was working out like crazy and she reached some horrible, you know, points of her uh, weight and her looks. And, and still she's 24 and she had to come to me for personal therapy to, to still work out on the same problems. Wow. It's like, yeah. <laughs> who tells a 10 year old that they're fat? It's yeah. Like such a horrible thing to do. So these things really affect you later in life. Like, um, they affect some people. They don't affect some people. So it's really hard to tell. Mm -hmm. But yes, for some people, it's really, it's just about the um, who say that at what point in their lives uh, because you might have really hard time in even as a kid i don't know family problems hormonal things and then some asshole says that you're fat and all together it gives this really bad effect mm. yeah and how do you how do they get over that mm, if they're, it's so entrenched you know it's there are different psychological techniques for that so yeah mm. you can just work with it <laughs> and what other problems do they come to you with um these i would say these are the the most common ones i can't remember now anything very special mm -hmm. yeah 
when you talk, it's about the same thing most of the times. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> I spoke to a sex therapist before um, and her clients like mostly men and it's almost all the same problem. Mm. You know, just can't get hard or can't mm -hmm. stay hard. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like girls also, almost everybody has like a very similar problem. Yeah. Do you know what's the reason for them, for their problems? I think my understanding is like, they put a lot of pressure on themselves mm -hmm. to do this performance. Yeah. And that, like putting, like thinking about doing mm -hmm. it stops it working. Yeah. Yeah. I really hate when we call it performance. That's the whole, that's the key to our problems. You think? People say sexually perform, but it's not a performance. We are performance. Okay. We are, it's our job to perform, but in our um, personal life. <laughs> oh my God. Um, in our personal sex life, we are not performers and it's not a sexual performance, you know? It kind of is because we rate each other. We judge each other. Yeah, and that's the whole problem. But I'm Judgment. sure you also judge the guys you're with. I do judge the guys and it's okay to judge, mm -hmm. but we don't have to know that we are, you know, we don't have to b put so much pressure on each other and um, we would give much better, you know, performance if we didn't call it performance. Uh, yeah, I, I see. I think most people don't tell their partners they're bad or whatever, but mm -hmm. I have heard of it before. Yeah. Like when one of my friends lost his virginity, mm -hmm. it was with a girl that like wasn't a native English speaker. Mm -hmm. And she said, um, he thought she said, is it in yet? <laughs> and apparently she okay. just said like, are you okay? Or something. <laughs> but that's what he heard. And he said, he just like collapsed on her oh and couldn't have sex for like five years or something. Oh Cause my. he was just so intimidated. Yeah. Oh, so poor guy. I think, yeah, those things have a dramatic <laughs> impact if it happens during sex that's or if you just I, think it happens during sex that's why i don't speak but, during sex to just not make any stupid mistakes and we like, said communicate yes before <laughs> oh before sex please. okay during important too but if you have something to say <laughs> you know and make sure that you say it clear and especially if english or if you don't share a common native language yeah well i had sex in hungarian recently yeah. <laughs> like i know that sounds stupid but normally when i have sex uh, we both speak english mm -hmm. but this girl was like she speaks hungarian during sex okay <laughs> because she's hungarian obviously yeah. but um yeah, it was interesting i thought she kept saying stop <laughs> <laughs> but she was saying something that meant like it's good or something like that. Okay. I can't remember. Hungarian And you didn't stop. I did. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, are you okay? <laughs> like, I like how you said she kept saying stuff. Yeah. You know, like I'll, if you didn't. Well, I kept, cause I kept stopping. Oh, okay. like, are you okay? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, what are you saying? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I had something on my mind and I forgot. So how common is it for you to have like a good or bad sexual experience? Um, <clears throat> you can be honest. No, I hate to say that I get disappointed quite often. <laughs> I think everybody does, right? Hmm? I think everybody does. Yeah, probably, yes. I find one in five partners mm -hmm. is good. Mm hmm and like maybe one in 10 is like really, really, really good. Really, really good. Yeah, I need to start counting, you know. You don't count? <laughs> no, no, I know the, 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 um, uh, what's the English word? Uh, uh, Sorry. I know the approximate number, mm -hmm. but yeah, I've never, I've never counted, um, never did the average or something. Yeah, I mean, I'm just estimating. I don't know <laughs> if that's like accurate, but it's how it feels. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but it, it's really sad. And I thought that at some point in my life, it stops happening that uh, I keep 
get disappointed in, in sex. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got to the stage now where I know if it's going to be bad and um, mm. I, I just stop. <laughs> like, like I, I just stop. It's really awkward. Yeah. But I don't care because it's more awkward to have like bad sex, I think. Yeah. So I'd be like, yeah. you know, when you're kissing and the person mm -hmm. doesn't seem to know how to kiss mm -hmm. and they're like touching you in a way that doesn't make any sense. Like there's yeah. no like passion or emotion. Yeah, it's or just any, dry. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Or like they're doing like the car wash thing with their tongue. And they're just okay. like rinsing your mouth out <laughs> with like no idea of what you're doing. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, let's stop. Like, <laughs> sorry. And you're the one who's saying that giving uh, a psychologist number is too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, just You can just stop person in the middle of kissing and say sorry. Yeah, I just say, oh, sorry, I'm not into yeah. it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's <laughs> never meet again so i guess <laughs> i consider myself lucky that no one ever did that to me before oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a brag but no but i have to say that i have i have had really um a lot of good experience too so mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i'm really happy about that yeah yeah and if do you think like maybe if you don't have the bad experiences mm -hmm. then because if all the experiences were good mm -hmm. <laughs> then they wouldn't be good, right? I'm not so sure. <laughs> They'd just be average. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's good to have something to to compare to and to yeah. like yeah. You've got to throw a few bad ones in. So <laughs> yeah. Make exactly. you appreciate the good one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's it's like yeah. a good justification for cheating, for example. <laughs> like, I just wanted to be reminded of how great you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean Yeah, sure. It might work for you. Okay. <laughs> That was a terrible idea. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really grateful for those bad experiences because <laughs> as you say that there is something to it to remember and like when I when I have these flashbacks, I'm like oh okay. What's a bad experience for you? Mm. Okay, let me uh, remember some really bad experience that I had. Oh, well, there are these assholes um, who make uh, any sex bad is when they, uh, when you find out that there is no condom, actually. <laughs> like Drawing when, sex. Yeah, when they tell you that they put the condom on and you kind of, you see it at first and they actually have it at first, but then they take it off during so, so that you don't see it. And yeah, and you find out. At the end of the sex. Wow, well, that's like... Um, that's that's the most horrible experience I had. Yeah, no, that's really horrible. Yeah. It's like non-consensual. Yeah. Really, really bad. It's so bad. It's not, yeah, it's not funny bad at all. It's no, just, I'm, it's I'm just horrible. I'm smiling just because I don't know how to react. <laughs> yeah, it's, same it's here. so, so bad. Yeah, And I'm that's wondering. common? No, no. Luckily, it happened to me only maybe once Or twice. <laughs> Once is too much. Twice is <laughs> also too much. Yeah. And I'm, I really, I didn't know if, how well, it works in Finland. that just kills the mood. Yeah. <clears throat> just doing something that... Yes. I mean, I just ran away from that person and hope never seeing them again. Mm. Um, yeah. But I was too young to react somehow to it. I just mm. <laughs> wanted to forget it as soon as possible. Uh, but the other bad experience would be when the guy um, comes inside, uh, even though he said that he wouldn't. That's another thing. Oh. <laughs> and there is like this beautiful excuse. Oh, it just felt so good. I'm so sorry. I didn't want to stop. I had that too. Wow. Yeah. Once or uh, more than once. Mm. <laughs> yeah but let me let me try to to find is something not, more fun <laughs> yeah this is not like bad sex this is just someone being an asshole and yeah doing things like without permission yeah like, these are like yeah. really big red flags like yeah not red flags they're just like they're just things you should never ever do yeah for like, sure no no it's like beyond disrespectful yeah it's it's way more than like, disrespectful it's yeah. just yeah Mm, anyway, 
<laughs> if we're talking about just bad sex, mm -hmm. it's probably like this dry sex when you know there is no no electricity at all. It's like it's just two bodies rubbing against each other and and when you try to make it more passionate and I'm actually working on it, I'm like you know, bringing some energy, but then that person doesn't respond at all mm -hmm. and just kills all the energy and that's all. It's just there. Yeah. yeah. So this is the same as like what I was saying about when I kiss someone and yeah. the body just doesn't respond yeah. in a natural way. Yeah. There's like no synchronization. Yeah. So it's the yeah. same for girls and guys. Mm, yeah, just, I would say it is. Yeah. I think the difference is maybe no, I think it's the same. Like once yeah. you start, it's very hard to like stop mm -hmm. without creating an awkward. Own. And have you noticed how those people, they always say like, like I, I've had sex with girls that have done nothing, mm -hmm. made no noise, nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, is she alive? <laughs> and then I kind of like stop, not because I've come, but because I'm just like, yeah, this yeah. will do. <laughs> And I just like pretend I've come or something and throw mm -hmm. the condom away. And oh then my. she's like, oh, that was the best sex I've ever had. <laughs> that makes it even worse. You know? Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, again, I had something on my mind. Mm. Oh, yeah. Also, the bad experience when the guys who learned sex from just watching porn. <laughs> Is that a bad thing? That's and they try to apply all the skills okay they acquired from watching porn in, which, into which real skills life. specifically um, or just the they have the the idea the wrong idea of uh, real sex you know and just they just they try to be as aggressive as possible mm -hmm. you know and they try to be as macho as possible and they don't um yeah just aggressive and fast and and hard you know so everything at the maximum and they just they just rub your uh, cleat like they're trying to make a fire out of it or something wow. <laughs> you know thinking because this is what they see in in porn at least in some porn movies right when the guy is just aggressively uh it, rubbing the girl's cleat and it's surprising when you watch porn guys how many of them don't seem to know what's going on down there mm -hmm. um yeah yeah <laughs> and it's just so awkward because he's on one hand he's really trying hard you know mm -hmm. to to make you feel good but on the other hand he's doing all the possible wrong things to your body and they're just you know physiologically not right and it's not gonna work like that and when they're you're trying to tell that this is not working uh they still do it in the wrong way they keep doing differently but still really unpleasant and oh like they just don't listen to like what they should do they just it seems like they it's difficult for them to understand because all these years they've learned uh you know to do it one way with the porn and they then they tried it on other girls who didn't say anything bad and they believed that the girls felt good you know and they they truly believe that this is how it should be and then of course when i tell them that no could you please do it differently it's just difficult for them to understand what i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> so or they don't listen yeah yeah and it's just really bad it keeps you know going but it's really bad yeah, do you think it's like their ego in a in a way, just like <clears throat> not wanting to admit that they're doing something wrong? Yes, I think so. Yeah, just like oh, a woman woman is uh, telling but, me what to do. <laughs> yeah, or, or like, but that might like work well for many girls, and yeah. then maybe it's just it doesn't work for all girls. You know, yeah. I, that's what I found when mm -hmm. I was like first started having sex. I was like wow i'm so good and yeah my girlfriend at the time she was loving it but and then you know when I had sex with someone else i was like ah, oh, <laughs> it's not getting the same reaction but i uh, um, <laughs> i can suspect rubbing someone's cleat really really hard and fast and dry doesn't yeah. feel good to to many 
girls there. Probably. Yes. So this is something which is obviously wrong. So like、um, the advice is be like start gentle. <laughs> yes, definitely.、Up. Yeah. Just start gentle. Start gentle. If she wants more, she'll tell, or you can ask. Yeah. But yeah, but at least not dry rubbing. Come on, it's, it's you're not trying to kill the poor, <laughs> poor poor clip there is. And if she's dry, then maybe back up a little bit anyway. Because... Yeah, maybe or just ask. Yeah. Because it's not always. You know, yeah, telling the truth. Let's say she can be aroused, right but yeah,、mm -hmm. yeah, that's a bad experience. It sounds yeah. Hurt. <laughs> um, if something comes to my mind, I, I'll I'll tell you definitely. It's like an interesting, you know, journey back to my memories. Yeah, yeah, blocked memories. <laughs> yes, <laughs> blocked memories for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really interesting because I, I think as a guy, it's really hard because when you meet someone that's、mm -hmm. new, it's very difficult for the girl to open up and tell you what she wants,、mm -hmm. even if like you'd be open yourself and hope she's the same back.、Mm -hmm. And plus, I think with all the guys being aggressive, I do think that the majority of girls I meet、mm -hmm. want like like most girls seem to want. More dominant behavior.、Um, mm, yeah, not all,、mm -hmm. but I'd say the majority.、Mm -hmm. And but they won't tell you that. So I've de I found that like at one point I was definitely disappointing girls by like maybe being too gentle、mm -hmm. at the beginning. But they weren't telling me、mm -hmm. they wanted harder or whatever.、Yeah. They weren't telling me what they liked. So it's like this really difficult situation.、Mm -hmm. And you know, if most girls prefer harder. There is that、mm -hmm. element of like maybe the, the guys are just taking a gamble, you know, just flipping a coin,、mm -hmm. saying, "Well,、oh, most girls like this, so、yeah. let's go in." Yeah, but see, that's also very interesting. That do they actually prefer it, or they just simply don't know how it can be done differently? I, I've thought about this a lot, and I, I don't know if it's just because I live in Hungary,、mm -hmm. and so most of my partners now are Hungarian. But I feel like something changed in the last five years, but. Almost every girl wants me to like choke her, spank her,、mm -hmm. or even slap her face.、Mm -hmm. And personally, I get nothing from those <laughs> things. It's really not me. But、yeah. if a girl likes it, then yeah, I can do it. Yeah. So it's tricky because、mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's just like Hungarian girls are like <laughs> extra nasty or something. <laughs> They might be. I don't know. But it's very interesting, though. What is what's the situation with your female friends? Are they mostly submissive and?、Mm, I would say they. I have、um, a switch friend. I'm I'm a switch myself,、mm -hmm. and I have submissive friends. I have dominant friends, so I have a very <laughs>、uh, diverse group of friends. Yeah, yeah, I find dominant girls are very rare. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably again. I don't know if it's rare because there are actually a few of them, or just because they didn't discover that part of them.、Mm -hmm. Because that was happened to me. You know, I always thought that I'm a sub, but I simply didn't let myself to discover the dominant part.、Mm -hmm. And only when I met the right partner who gave me that space, you know, and when I worked with them. Psychologist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I finally, you know, became confident about myself, I discovered that, that there is actually a big dominant part in me, and so I can be switch. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, and I guess also like sexuality can change over time, so、yeah. you can, yeah, you know, just need a change. But yeah, yeah. So now I'm wondering. <laughs> But I don't know about Hungarian girls. But, Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess, like, because most girls here have like the daddy issues thing,、uh -huh. because no one really knows their dad here. Okay. Everyone's divorced in this country. Okay, interesting. So, yeah, and the fathers are all absent.、Mm -hmm. Not all, but like, out of all the Hungarian people I know, I know two people、mm -hmm. whose parents are still together,、okay. or that they have a good relationship with、yeah. their dad. Yeah. So I think that causes. 
Like yeah. um, they do say that the daddy issues thing does lead you to be like more sexual to like more extreme sex and things like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's true in yeah. psychology. I yeah. read about this. <laughs> No, I'm just laughing because, no, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you want to have nasty sex, come to Hungary, I guess. <laughs> like. But see, I need to find out what guys, what issues guys have to have to be sexually crazy. <laughs> so I can pick the right ones. I think it's, it must, maybe it's the same. I don't know. Daddy issues? Where's mummy issues? Mummy issues. <laughs> <laughs> I think guys can have daddy issues too, though, because it's yeah. just like the impact of the absent yeah, father. Yeah, for sure. Not yes. the, it doesn't mean you want a relationship with your dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, yes. Have you dated Hungarian guys? Uh, I've been on one date with one Hungarian guy, but uh, it was purely platonic date, so uh, I don't have much to tell yet. <laughs> but I'm really curious to find out how is it, yeah. Of course, I believe it can be very different, but I need to, I need first to try it with uh, several Hungarian guys to, to make an sample. opinion. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I need like five or ten. I'm sure you'll get lots of ten. volunteers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do you mm. find there is a difference between different cultures in how well they please women? I, I do see a difference, yes. I personally, I'm a fan of Latino guys. <laughs> But obviously above them, like British. Uh, I haven't had a British guy really? yet. No, I can't imagine. Yeah. Such a, I feel like I'm missing out things. I think so, <laughs> probably. A quick uh, drunk sex. <laughs> yeah, that would be British guys. Like, drunk. Yeah, <laughs> in a bar, in a club. Yeah, definitely missing out. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, but Latina guys have been... What do they do really different? Good. Um, because mm. <laughs> I would say that generally the it's some like Latin cultures are more macho mm -hmm. and less equal. Like yeah, they're much more sexist societies, especially Italy, for example. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting. So what are they doing different? Yeah, actually, it's very interesting and. Uh, what they're doing differently is that um, no, it's just difficult to to, <laughs> to concentrate right now because I have um, a really nice guy. He's from Spain, mm -hmm. and he was the first lover that um, actually surprised me in a really really good way. Uh, what he did, he he um, went down on me before the actual before the vaginal sex he stole my trick yes and i was so shocked by it you know because before that i had i had some some guys but none of them did that mm -hmm. and this was like the whole game changer really and and he's really good at uh doing it so yeah and he's very passionate and he knows how to i don't know just his touch is really you know not dry <laughs> not not too rough not too uh, you know like soft and <laughs> mm -hmm. lifeless but yeah and other guys other latina guys are also very um i feel like they want me to have fun and to have pleasure with them and That's interesting and they talk to me about that they tell me that they like to to go down on me they tell me that they like me they like to see me to have pleasure to enjoy and that really helps it helps a lot yeah and i think if you think of like the stereotype like latin person mm -hmm. they do tend to talk more you know and yeah. they communicate more and yeah. Yeah, they are very direct like for yes. better or worse like yeah. you tend to know where you stand with them more yeah yeah it seems that it's much easier for them to talk Definitely. Uh, and that's that was like uh, a big change for me. Yeah. Yeah. I completely yeah. understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's just uh, this guy is still in my mind. Ah. Uh, no. He lives here? N no. Ah. Uh, he lives in, in Finland. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine why anyone <laughs> would move to Finland. It's just so cold. Yeah. But it's a better life there. 
yeah. more more stable, more predictable, more uh, financially secure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think I told you I used to have a girlfriend in Finland, and I never ever visited her because. Uh -huh. It was like 24 hours dark where she lived. She lived like yeah. in Lapland. Yeah, but blonde girls. Oh, uh, no, actually she was from Australia. She okay. Just <laughs> <laughs> okay. So like... But I guess, anyway, that's another reason why I would want, uh, want to move to Finland because of blonde girls. Yeah, I guess. I am not picky on hair color, to <laughs> no. be honest with you. I'm, some Latin guys have a big obsession over blondes, so... Yeah, I, in Italy, right when I was living there, it was like fashionable to have a Russian girlfriend. <laughs> it was almost like you had to have one. Yeah, like you had to have like a certain car, a certain clothes, mm -hmm. and a Russian girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so many Latin guys are so proud to, to tell me that they like Russian girls. Mm. And they are so proud to 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 go on a date with me, you know, because I'm I'm Russian. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so funny. Yeah, it's very funny. <clears throat> I want to get into porn a little bit. Yeah. Because I'm curious, like because you're obviously an intimacy coach. Yes. So what do you think to sex in porn? Like, because how have you done many scenes with guys yet? Mm, probably like five or six. Okay, so not many yet. Yeah. 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 Um How's the porn sex compared to mm. average guy sex? <laughs> uh, porn sex can be really nice. What I've discovered about it, yes. And it can be really difficult too. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I love both. I love normal <laughs> average guy sex and I love porn sex. But do you find the guys in porn like are better at sex than average guys i would need to try them in real life to tell uh, yeah. <laughs> yes it's different isn't it yeah it is different yeah <laughs> i'm so sorry you're like uh, just smiling at me and like what is a fun no. question <laughs> yeah mm, but that's what i'm afraid of too that Uh, guys from my personal life would be it would make them more insecure knowing that you know i have sex with the porn guys this, because they're so great they're so sexy and you know big muscles <laughs> big this dicks. is like a downside of working in porn yeah. is that people will be insecure some people will be insecure around you like mm -hmm. just because of that yeah um i've heard from female friends that Like when they date normal guys, sometimes mm -hmm. the guy just can't get hard because he just, he's like, yeah, but you date porn stars. Oh, and yeah. How am I meant to please you? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I get it as well from girls. And even when I mm -hmm. wasn't working in porn, mm -hmm. just having porn friends yeah. was yeah. enough to just yeah. like make the jealousy go crazy. Yeah. See, people know so little about porn industry. So it makes all these crazy uh, uh, beliefs. Yeah, like, and you're right, I think people people assume that, like, if you're working in porn, you're mm -hmm. a certain type of person, yeah. and they don't realize mm. that anyone can do porn, like, no matter what they look like, how mm -hmm. old they are, where they're from, how good they are at sex, yeah. how big their dick is, Yeah, they can do porn. Yes. And... Yeah. Like, it, people in porn are just the same as people in real life. Yes. So. Yeah, that's true. They don't realize that uh, the difference between us is just our personality. And it's not so much about the looks and the, the physical, you know, aspects in general. So, yeah. Yeah, the only thing we have in common is that we do porn. <laughs> so <laughs> that's exactly. It. Yeah. Um, there is so much to learn for people. And we need sexual education. <laughs> What can I say? Are you still learning? Or would you? Mm, I am learning always. Always a student, I would say. So what are like the main things guys can do to get better in bed? Mm, good question. 
Um, be comfortable with themselves, right? And um, uh, I just really hate when guys, if they have, if their dick is not getting hard for some reason, because they had bad experience before, because they mm -hmm. drank too much, because they didn't sleep enough or something, uh, and they start to get nervous about that. And it just, it just gets uh, worse and worse. And it's really like, oh, come on. It's very hard not to though. Like, yeah. like I I'm very chill with that stuff. Like I know everyone has a bad day. Mm, yeah. Because it just happens. Yes. But it's hard to like not let that get to you. Yeah. Like when I do it, I just... Um... <laughs> yeah. Stupid cat. <laughs> Like when it happens to me, I normally like take a break and do something yeah. else, like go down on the girl, yeah. um, maybe touch myself at the same time. Yes. Just do something different. Yeah, exactly. And um, try and forget it. Yeah. And that would be my first advice, I would say. Be it's really annoying when the guy, you know, gets problem in there. Not even a problem, but just, you know, <laughs> a break. We need to take a break, but mm -hmm. he's all either angry that's even much worse. Oh, they than, get angry. Yeah, they get angry sometimes, like on themselves and start being aggressive. Like, what do they say? Mm, they just get this, like, all this energy, you know, and like, oh, shit, they start, uh, you know, yeah, saying about oh. something about their, their bodies and, like, yeah, not being aggressing, aggressive towards me necessarily, but yeah, about themselves. And instead of that, you can just kiss and, you know, touch and go down on a girl mm -hmm. and just be nice. And it's so much better than getting upset or angry. Yeah, I can't imagine getting angry. And yeah. Like, Fuck, I was about to have sex and <laughs> yes. what did you do to me? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah basically that. It's just... Really? Uh, yeah. That sounds like a cliche, like something <laughs> from a comedy show, not from real life. And that's common? Um, more common is just getting frustrated. And mm. the most annoying thing a guy can do is get frustrated and just, you know, just leave, uh, to the go to the kitchen, you know, and sit there and be sad. Really? <laughs> yeah. that's all right. Or it's like, and especially if we were in the middle of something, you know, like if you're already having sex and for some reason guy goes soft, and he just stops all the activity uh, and just leaves. That's like the worst ever. That's the bad sex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just leaves you. It's like, okay, I understand you have a problem, but what about me? It's not only about your dick. <laughs> like, yeah. come and do something. It's just not unpolite. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about sex ethics. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't imagine it. Like, um, see, I've never had that problem, but yeah. at, at work I have, like, you know, you have a bad day and it doesn't work sometimes mm -hmm. at home, if it doesn't work and you have to, yeah, take a break. Yeah. But a break usually helps or yeah. a nap, a nap, helps. <laughs> a cuddle and a nap. Yeah. Anything is better than being angry or yeah, leaving I, the room <laughs> sulking would just make it so bad i think <laughs> but uh, i have to say that i'm i'm trying to be really nice about it always i don't make it worse i'm just oh like you know trying to make a person feel better and saying that it happens to everybody and it's okay and that's true it, it, yeah it does happen to everybody yeah maybe there's like some superhuman person out there yeah like, that it never happens to porn you, actors because <laughs> they're injecting their yeah like, exactly but yes maybe someone like eric everhard or someone like that like, <laughs> he's a machine but see that's also that's coming from the movies not even porn but like just normal movies and tv series i was just watching something I was watching The Office mm -hmm. <laughs> recently, and they were they were discussing some um, problems with getting hard, and they were really like judging and shaming the character who yeah, had problems with that. Got to. And I was like, <laughs> why? 
And and the uh, the other guys uh, would say that oh it never happened to me I would never know what to do. It's like come on, are you serious? You're 30 years old and never in your life your dick went soft. Look, I can tell you like with my porn friends, it's only because of like working in porn mm -hmm. that I'd be okay saying yeah that happened today. It was so hard, mm -hmm. and you know like, you make a little joke because like we all have like our little technique for getting hard again yeah and like with me i would think of the money i would lose if, yeah <laughs> like, if, if i have to cancel the day and that kind of gets me going again <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it sounds so bad but it helps me <laughs> so no i have to say i'm getting wet myself when i think about money <laughs> so... see, see it works right yes it does work <laughs> so um so maybe just uh, think about money maybe that. i need to start paying them like see yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna get your money if you don't get hard exactly. <laughs> yeah. so healthy but yeah in real life if i didn't do this job <clears throat> and like one no one would ever talk about <clears throat> struggling mm. no male friend has ever brought that up in a conversation no i, I can think of one person and they didn't bring it up to me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not even, I can't even say it because in case they. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, like, um, no. That sucks. So you just, men it, don't talk about that. Yeah. Men don't talk about that. Women don't talk about that. Only people who talk about that, queer people, <laughs> might be. Yeah, I think it's more normal. Definitely. Yes. And I'm, um, I'm so jealous you know i'm so happy for them really and i really wish that more people would be able but i think women talk. talk if the man can't get hard just yes <laughs> but it's not healthy talking you know it's not helpful mm. at all and if you're talking about this stuff it, it should be helpful at least but it's funny how like important getting hard is to your masculinity yeah it's oh like um if you don't Mm. are you a man yeah you're not a man come on because you can't do what <laughs> men do you cannot perform <laughs> yeah. well yeah and but are there like medical reasons for it maybe it's like a low testosterone thing or have I you noticed like a pattern with like is it certain types of guy that can't get hard not really just everybody no, no just everybody yeah and mostly if you talk about that, they, they'll tell that something happened in the past, like a girl made fun or said something offensive, even unintentionally, but yeah. So basically it's all girls' fault. <laughs> yes, uh, you can blame us, it's fine. <laughs> we'll take the blame for all your problems, Yeah, you take the blame for all our yes. problems, Yeah, and I think that's a nice deal. <laughs> yes. Um... Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm thinking if I have uh, questions for you, but... Probably not. <laughs> probably not. Um, okay, so tell us a bit about um, your porn career so far, because I think that's interesting, because you're quite new. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, like, mm -hmm. how's it going so far? I uh, it's going very good. Mm, I really like it so far. And it's not the easy job, for sure not. What do you find difficult? It's just um, physically difficult. You know, it takes hours mm. to make a scene. Not just, not necessarily fucking, but just being present and photo you know taking pictures uh doing this this and this and constantly you know those stops during the sex are just <laughs> so annoying to me personally like ah uh, oh, when you stop during yeah, sex. yeah yeah when See, they have some, to some directors will let you keep going because uh -huh. they'll want the energy and just, yeah but i think most in europe will stop you yeah and because they have to move the light or to move the camera it's just come on we are having sex here and you have to move your fucking equipment 
mm. do something about it. You know, it's just because we lose all the. Okay, we don't lose all the energy, but still, it's just not as cool anymore. Yeah, yeah. it can be like that. Yeah, uh, but it really depends. But in general, it's really cool. I like it. Yeah, let's see. Let's see for how long. <laughs> What's been the highlight so far? Mm, that scene we did <laughs> with uh, the. <laughs> Because I was there. I yes, because you yeah. were there. I made it. Yeah, thank you so much. My face is apparently <laughs> made it. Uh, it. It's so funny because I've been working in porn for so long, but I still get shocked. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, it's not shock. It's like I haven't changed as a person. So I, mm -hmm. if I see something weird, I just do it <laughs> face. And that day, there's so much weirdness. Yeah, well, not so much weirdness for me, I have to say. I don't know. Really? Yeah. It's just you go regular, <laughs> regular sex in my life. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, I'm more innocent. <laughs> yeah. Um, and is it a career for you? Like you're going to stay around or it's just something you're trying? I would like to stay, Yeah. I really, it's difficult for me to tell, you know, for how long I'll be having this, the, the, the passion, the interest, the energy. But today I can say that I will have it for, for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would like to stay longer and I would like to, you know, achieve something even mm -hmm. just for fun, <laughs> but like to I'm have a round of applause. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to have this uh, fact in my biography that, you know, enjoy, has become the the most um, popular, famous uh, porn actress in the history of. <laughs> Start with Finland and then work okay. your way up. <laughs> yes, in mm, okay, in Scandinavia. Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. It's weird. There's not many porn stars from Scandi countries anymore. Yeah, it used to be the center of the industry. Really? Yeah, I didn't Sweden know that. was like the pioneer, and it was the big place. Wow. And um, what happened? I don't know. I maybe the equality thing. I don't know. Oh yeah. Um, but there's some some producers were trying to bring it back a few years ago, but no. That it's would gone. be that would be definitely really cool to to bring it back because I mean Swedish Norwegian girl are just so hot. So. Yeah, I think like <laughs> Italy and Sweden are like the two super mm -hmm. hot European countries. Yeah. At least for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're like the stylish, well-dressed countries, aren't they? Yes, like, true, true that, yeah. Oh, let's hope for the best. Yeah, <laughs> bring let's hope that more Swedish, Swedish porn, please. For Swedish people who are listening to this, please do more porn. Do they have many OnlyFans people in the Scandi countries? I don't know. See, I'm so new to all these. I've got my OnlyFans myself just like uh, a few weeks ago. And really? I, yeah, that near? Yeah, and I don't know much people who are doing it, except the people I work with, so. Right. Yeah. But when I go back to Helsinki, just to visit my home, uh, <laughs> I'm going to, you know, walk in the bar uh, with many, many girls. I'm just going to randomly ask, like, do you have only funds? Yeah. yeah that, that's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we will see how many of them we'll have. Yeah, I'm also just going to go up to random girls and just be like, do you have OnlyFans? <laughs> yeah. I think it's like the modern version of, can I see your tits? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like slightly more polite. Yeah. And and the modern version of, uh, I want to have sex with you is, uh, would you make uh, content for OnlyFans oh. with me? <laughs> <laughs> you saw that. <through> it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we just need content. We just need to, we can sell yeah, it. You know, we can make money. Let's make content. No, but content good it is good yeah yeah it's just funny and usually the girl makes more money from the content than the guy i don't know much about it but yeah i can imagine yeah. usually <laughs> yeah um, i feel like we haven't talked much about uh toxic masculinity oh that's the topic you wanted to bring or up. about porn i also like porn topic so um let's do the toxic masculinity one and bring porn into it because i didn't i thought we were speaking about like the orgasms and stuff no but, i mean we're okay. talking there i think they're all related mm -hmm. somehow 
So there's, I'm just bringing ideas, you know, either yeah. that so or porn or. I must admit, I, I'm, I hear the phrase toxic masculinity. Yeah. And I don't really know what it means. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's one of these buzzwords that people just attack men with. Yeah. <laughs> just for being men sometimes. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I think that you can be right that some, of course, all the terms are used, misused. You know, and people just like to use them whenever it's beneficial for them, even though it's a kind of wrong mm -hmm. situation. But um, toxic masculinity, masculinity is in sex is um, it's a big thing, I think. And we talked about a few things already today, like not giving a shit about whether uh, a girl is having a good time or not. Did we talk about that? We said something. Yeah, we said like just yeah. not caring. Yeah, so I think that is toxic masculinity. Like, you know, I'm a man. I'm the one who deserves oh, that's to feel good here. And Do you think yeah. they don't care because they're sexist? Or do you think they don't care just because they're selfish? Because, like, not caring mm -hmm. doesn't mean that, like, you have an agenda to not care, you know? It's not like, oh, I just want to satisfy myself. Like, they mm -hmm. might think that they're actually pleasing the girl because, mm -hmm. hey, I'm happy, so you must be happy. Yes, but even if I tell them, <laughs> True. <you know. laughs> True. Well, that is different. <laughs> that is different. Or actually, well, see, because I'm, I'm coming from Russia originally, right? Mm. And I lived there for, for the first 16 years of my life and I have some Russian friends and there are many Russian people in Finland who I'm you know, um, talking to, and I've dated some Russian guys, and this has been the worst experience for me, really? because there is a lot of sexism and toxic, um, yeah, toxic masculinity in Russia, and yeah, so with these guys, sometimes when you tell them that, you know, it would be nice if you go down on me, and they would make this face and like, we, like a, a, a real man would never do that. Really? Yeah. So in their, in their reality, real man never goes down on a girl, never licks a pussy, <laughs> kisses. There you is know. a medical reason why maybe <laughs> they shouldn't. And this gets into sexism again, because like with women... Mm -hmm. um, they vaccinate young girls against HPV, which obviously causes cancers. But they don't vaccinate young men, and we get that from oral sex. Mm -hmm. So we can get throat cancer from oral sex. <laughs> so maybe, maybe they're just... I think that's the reason, yeah. yes. They're just taking such a good care of their health. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I completely disagree. But it's weird. Yeah. And yeah. it's just a cultural thing. Like Russian guys tend not to do that. <clears throat> At least Russian Russian guys, yes. Mm, I don't want to say all of them. Yeah, yeah. But it's you can you can find these guys. It's kind of common. Uh, maybe there are some other cultures that are similar to this, but I don't know much about them. But yes, it's interesting to me as well because when I think of Russian women, mm -hmm. I generally find they're very strong people, very strong minded. And I find Russian men to be much more passive, at least in conversation. So I would imagine the girls might be in charge in the bedroom too. <coughs> I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I was never, I just, that was just like how I might imagine things. So I don't know. No, no, I think maybe it can be one of the reasons why men are taking the lead in bed because they have to compensate <laughs> somehow uh as, as you say mm -hmm. that the women are kind of strong-minded but i don't really know much about this i don't live there i don't know how it is um i just know that men russian guys may be bad in bed <laughs> wow russian guys are bad in bed so maybe <laughs> some of them they've got sanctions and yeah. now <laughs> they've got sexual sanctions please 
Now, I also had a really nice experience with Russian guys. Mm -hmm. Once I've talked to them, you know, and I explained that this is not enough, and we <laughs> went through some things. I would just love to hear that. <laughs> Excuse me, tell me, like, um, <laughs> this is not enough. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh come on that made me look bad <laughs> no it's funny i mean it's good it's good to talk and communicate but <clears throat> it is yeah. funny when you stop and think about it <laughs> i've been really nice to them i did my best to be super super polite and careful and choosing words <laughs> really carefully um so once you know you talk to them you explain that how how your body works and everything so it's simply they're not bad in bed because they're bad in bed mm -hmm. it's simply the lack of knowledge lack of information or wrong information that's all i believe there is no there is no cultures who are bad in bed just because they're you know they can't be good yeah. but simply because in some cultures there is not enough education that's all yeah in most cultures i think yeah yeah that's it <laughs> So what else, what other to toxic masculinity is there in sex? Mm, oh, well, again, I told already a couple of stories which are not bad sex, but it's just yeah. being... Like the entitled. Yeah. Thing. And also when a guy keeps going, even though you say that it's painful and you don't like it, it's oh, not pleasant. What? I've had that too. See, I've had so much shitty experience. You need to pick better guys. <laughs> I am now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to this experience, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that was, yeah, and once, or even more than once, a guy actually said to me that, you know, I feel good, so you can just wait, like, um, a little longer and it will be over soon. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I laughing? <laughs> and you're just in pain. And yeah. He's like. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. The worst, <laughs> the worst I so ever bad. had was, um, I can't remember if I told this on the podcast or not, but um, a girl was like, finishing me with a blowjob mm -hmm. and then I was really close and I started to hear like I thought maybe crying okay like and I, I wasn't sure at first and then I was like oh no she's definitely crying okay <laughs> and I was like what do I do because I'm really close to coming and um I finished <laughs> <laughs> and and then immediate was like, oh my God, are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but was she? She was, yes. Why? Because mm. during the middle of a blowjob, she realized that how sad sex is that <laughs> people are not in love and that we probably won't have a serious relationship. And all this stuff. <laughs> and then um, the next day she texted me that I'm bad in bed and have a small penis. <laughs> and then she blocked me. <laughs> so. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was an experience. But... <clears throat> Do you think that the actual reason for her tears was that you're bad and bad? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that was just trying to no. be mean and hurt <laughs> okay. me. Okay. But I think mm. the tears were. Um, I don't know. She wanted a serious relationship, but then she didn't, and she did, and mm -hmm. she didn't. She was good though. She was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> always the crazy uh, ones yeah i see now what you mean yeah <clears throat> oh my god i even forgot what they were talking about. i was like just imagining this girl crying i was so bad teeth. i was so <laughs> close that's the thing and i had a moral dilemma yeah and i think 
I did what everybody would do, <laughs> which is nothing. I didn't do anything. I chose inaction. But I felt guilty for it. Yeah. But also not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially once she blocked me. That yeah, was like, I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> have guys, do guys ever cry in bed? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Uh -huh. I'm laughing because I'm wondering if that ever happened to me, but no, I don't think I made someone cry. No, I didn't make this girl oh, cry. Yes. She made herself yeah. cry. Yeah. Just, um... No, I don't think so. No, <laughs> that would be, that would be fun. <laughs> I mean, to, yeah, to have this experience, but no, I didn't. Yeah, I know a girl, more than one girl that, enjoys making guys cry in bed <laughs> depends for what reasons like Because she's into so bdsm ah uh, okay and but she just likes hurting guys okay. emotionally i really hope it's consensual at least uh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, i see <laughs> okay just yeah. a thing i think okay some people are like that aren't they it's like yeah they like to just prod and poke and yeah and see make someone suffer. work yeah yeah um, mm, such such bad uh, memories now are coming to my mind but yeah really? no because i was telling all these stories about you know how guy kept going through the yeah. pain and <laughs> okay we should end on a positive yeah yeah we should talk <laughs> talk about something positive now What's like your best sexual experience and why was it good? Let's see if we can learn from that. My best sexual experience, hmm, there were a few of them. The first one that comes to my mind was my first uh, threesome with guys. Ah. Yeah. Uh, so there was two guys who invited me for all this event and um, they were really experienced and really... Um, opposite to sexist and toxic mm -hmm. <laughs> really nice ones and um, they prepared all this tantric massage for me at first you wow. know yeah so we started with that the the atmosphere was really intimate mm -hmm. music candles and i mean two guys uh, yeah it's not how you imagine a threesome of two guys it's, you'd expect it to be more macho and aggressive and more wild than mm -hmm. Tantric. Yeah, imagine. So we started with the tantric massage and um, it turned out to be a great, uh, great threesome with uh, lots of, you know, mm, sanity. <laughs> I would say. Sanity. Like, uh, yeah, th those guys, even, even if they would go soft for a while, they would accept it in a super, you know, mm -hmm grown-up way, super normal way, the way you expect it to be. And we would take breaks, we would talk, we would laugh, you know, mm -hmm. just being really intimate to each other, like really, you know, like good friends and also like good lovers and all together. So they made everything for me to feel extremely comfortable, as comfortable as mm -hmm. possible, as relaxed as possible. And yeah, so it was a great experience, really. Yeah, yeah. so... And I completely get that. I think a lot of people, like, they'll hear, like, oh, like, I'll see a newspaper story mm -hmm. or a magazine story where it says, oh, yeah, we had sex for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. or, and they don't seem to realize that yeah. you're not Actually, half for 10 hours. Yeah. Fucking. <laughs> yes. And that sex is, like, the whole evening. Yes. Like, everything that happens. And yeah. things don't have to happen in, like, an exact, a specific order. Mm -hmm. It's, like not like sex has to be the end it doesn't have to be anywhere it's like mm -hmm. you can just mix it up and yeah it's just happening yeah yes it's just like hanging out but in yeah. a sexy way yeah and this this thing was going on for six five to six hours mm. you know all together and yeah so it was really like um a true experience not just it, it doesn't mean also when i say that they took uh, good care of me and like they made me feel comfortable it doesn't mean that they were soft and gentle and like yeah. slow and nice it doesn't mean that at all you know you can make a girl feel comfortable and still have really 
aggressive sex mm -hmm. if you want to. So, yeah. And yeah, and I think the thing that we left out is like maybe we should just like list the things that help girls achieve a good orgasm. Mm -hmm. And I think the first thing is like maybe the atmosphere. Like just if especially if a girl struggles, then yeah. the atmosphere is even more important. Just yes. having a sexy atmosphere. Yeah, of course, the atmosphere. Like it doesn't hurt to play with lights yeah. and candles or something a little bit. It's For not sure. much effort. Because not everybody can do it in the daylight or in the porn light, you yeah, know. Because... See, I like the daylight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can see everything, but yeah, most people don't like it. Yes. You have to, to feel really secure about your body to, to be yeah. able to have sex in that light. Like a lot of girls say to me, they're like, oh, don't you want to close your windows? I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't care. <laughs> Like, what about people watching? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> good for them. <laughs> yeah, They're exactly lucky day. Saying, like, Please, can we close the window? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. A good atmosphere, and also, as I mentioned before, saying that you know I'm here for you to enjoy, and it's also important to me that you have fun, I have a good time, and I want you to guide me, kinda, and to let me know if something is wrong. Yeah, so it's important to show that you are a, a nice human being. Yeah, mm -hmm. very much so. <laughs> yeah. And then we're saying you need to like understand the girl's body. Like if you need instructions, mm -hmm. get instructions from her. Yes. If you don't, at least try to like feel what yeah. she likes. Like try different yeah. pressures, places. Yes. Movements. Yeah. I mean, now it's very easy. You can just Google, you know, <laughs> there, there yeah. are so many sources of information. You can just find the one that is other than porn. Like my website, for example, <laughs> or probably your stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, and you can just learn from there, you know, at, and then, at least some basics. And then when it comes to sex, like mm -hmm. be respectful don't do you think she doesn't obviously. want to do <laughs> obviously if she's crying don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't keep going but maybe stop Anna. she kept going <laughs> to be fair yeah now what i what i uh, noticed it's also extremely important to to let the girl know that she doesn't have to have orgasm in her time you know oh, like that there is no time limit for that yeah, I read this once. Mm -hmm. I'm always reading about sex and trying things. And mm -hmm. um, you know, like when you read something and then when you say it, mm -hmm. it comes out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like um, I read that you should like try and make a girl feel that like, you know, you don't, you know, you, that you understand that sex isn't about mm -hmm. necessarily having an orgasm. <laughs> and I think it came out of my mouth. It's like, I don't care if you have an orgasm. <laughs> and I was like, no, I don't mean like that. Because <laughs> it was saying about like not uh, putting pressure on her to have an orgasm. Yeah. So so see you can before sex you can practice. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. Saying these things, yeah, yeah. But I think people get more nervous saying things during sex because you're both naked. Because yeah, that's so I what think I that's meant. That's why bad things come out. That's what I meant. That you have to talk before or after, mm. better before. And not when you're naked and, and putting a condom on, you know, it's like, by the way, <laughs> yeah. I have to say, and then you start listing things. No. Yeah. And it's got to be before. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> but not when you just meet her. <laughs> it's like, like just to find an appropriate timing. Yeah. I'll yeah. try. <laughs> it's like, I'm talking directly to you now. Yeah. <laughs> giving, giving you <laughs> instructions here. <laughs> yeah thank you so anyway much. you're welcome <laughs> okay and um is there anything we missed on the list i think that's generally it isn't it um yeah I but think. it sounds like most of these things are just like be a nice normal yeah person common sense <laughs> your girl will have a good time <laughs> yeah yeah well, it doesn't hurt to learn a few uh, techniques for giving oral sex. So. Do you think that can be learned? I think you can at least uh, learn what is there 
mm. and you can try, you know, with a partner and see maybe there is something that she didn't know exist, you know, nobody ever done it before and you'll be the first one because, yeah, there's always something to learn. Yeah. Mm. Just, yeah, I don't know. I just always think that like, like for me, I know that like you can learn sex maybe, but I think some people just feel mm -hmm. it and some people yeah. don't. Yeah. And maybe yeah. some people, maybe like the people that are bad at sex for you should be with other people that are bad at sex. <laughs> and that's just it. You, know? <laughs> you think that sometimes? Like maybe just the bad people should just hook up. Mm, yeah. Because you know? they're both probably like, wow, those are like the best three minutes of my life. In, it might be true. But really? Might be, <laughs> yes. It's like, you know, not everyone likes to go to like a fine dining restaurant and yeah. have amazing food. They just mm -hmm. put it in and they eat it and they're like, okay, it was fine. <laughs> yes. It was fuel. Exactly. Yes. And sex is like that for some people. Yeah, so maybe definitely. it's like not necessarily a bad thing to, to not have great sex. Yeah, it's just good for different people. <laughs> Well, no, I yeah. don't want to believe that. I want to believe that <laughs> sex can be good and fulfilling for everybody. Mm. But we don't know. Yeah, it'd be interesting <laughs> to find out. I kind of want to hook up these people that are really bad at sex. <laughs> like next time you get a bad one, tell yeah. me, <laughs> yeah. and I'll send you one of my bad ones. Yeah, and and we, we can, can see. go on like a double date. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's the deal. Deal. Yeah, <laughs> deal. All right. But yeah, I think now we've covered pretty much. Yeah. So thanks so much for coming on the podcast and teaching me how to give girls <laughs> orgasms. You are very welcome. Yes. I, I'm trying to think if I knew this stuff already mm -hmm. or if I'll actually change anything. Yeah. And I'm not sure. I, I think I. I think I like try and just be more relaxed mm -hmm. when like just more easygoing yeah. when I communicate and then that's the main thing yes it is I think so too um because so maybe like when the past I was like so what do you like because <laughs> like, I'm so used to like just being in porn and yeah being very direct that maybe I'll just be a bit more subtle I think mm. like a bit more general and just let things happen mm. um but yeah, mm -hmm. it's really interesting. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, inviting me and giving me the space for, you know, finally saying those things yeah. out loud and making me, make me remember those horrible, yeah, I've horrible just, sex, like, sex stories. Brought back happened. lots of trauma. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> um, do you want to tell people where they can find you? Uh, people can find me, they can find my Instagram page. They can find my Twitter, they can find my OnlyFans, and I go everywhere as Enjoy. So A N N J O I. J O I. Y. Yes. I can and spell. Instagram is Enjoy Life. Oh, yeah. Under, underline. Is it how I call it? Yeah. And underscore Joy Life. On the what? Underscore. <laughs> That's the name of the. This, this card. What? No, the line at the ah, bottom. Ah, yes. It's called an underscore. Okay, yes. <laughs> Stupid name. Like, line at the bottom would be better, right? Yeah, line at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Much easier for me. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but I'll link to everything. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All cool. right. Well, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. I think we giggled all the way through that. <laughs>